Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Knock knock. Who's there? Who is your daddy and what does he do? You killed my father. Big mistake. Welcome to a late night large pumped up with steroids and spitting the finest one liners known to man. If you haven't figured out yet what our theme is tonight, then get out. Otherwise, stick around. My name is Dutch Schaefer, and next to me sits the famous comedian Arnold Braunschweiger. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Yes, tonight we are uh, discussing the uh, the man mountain, the action hero by which all others are measured. Mike, top man, isn't he? Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're going to be discussing Arnie films tonight. Obviously, right now he's uh, he's not had the best press right now. But then again, he is he's practically drawing his pension, so uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And he's Republican. Yeah, which, which always counts against him. I mean, if we uh, if we remember his uh, his roots. Arnie did begin as a, a young wannabe bodybuilder back in his native Austria. and um, 15 when he started bodybuilding. Apparently so. And um, Any 15-year-olds any listening out there now, if you haven't started bodybuilding yet, what are you doing? If you <laughs> want to turn out like Arnie, you better crack on. And of course we won't condone uh, some of the allegations of uh, Arnie's conduct in the gym. He, uh, Speak for yourself. He, fl- <laughs> he fled to America to uh, follow the American dream and become a Hollywood film star. Um, believe it or not, Arnie's first Hollywood picture was actually back in the end of the 60s with uh, Hercules in New York. Pretty apt part, really. Of course, it was a flop because Arnie didn't really surface again until the, ma- years later, the match made in heaven in 1982 when he became Conan the Barbarian. Can I just say, sacrilege remaking Conan the Barbarian Arnie was Conan and is Conan always true story true story uh, and even though the uh, the sequel was met with uh, muted uh, acclaim his his star was heading for well the stratosphere really wasn't it two years later he teamed up with James Cameron and the rest is history he became the Terminator after that I mean, he pretty rapidly, he made, on average, a couple of blockbusters every year throughout the 80s and mid-90s. I mean, he followed that with uh, Red Sonja, another fantasy action, and then the glorious Commando in, in the, the same, same year. year. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. My personal favourite um, was a couple of years later when, uh, despite being 40 years of age, Arnie was uh, the most vivid and a uh, ball-busting interpretation of machismo as a uh, major Dutch Schaefer in Predator in 1987. In the same year, another one of my favourites, Run- The Running Man, of course. Another, um, another classic. Yeah, ben, ben Richards, remember? That was when he had his, uh, his lumberjack beard as well, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ar- Arnie was a, a hell of an escape convict. Uh, followed that with uh, the the following year was uh, Red Heat, uh, where he played a Soviet soldier, I believe, or so- Soviet um, agent. Yeah. And uh, that was the year when uh, Hollywood finally cottoned on to the fact that maybe they should give Arnie the odd comedy role to um, mm, broaden his diversity. Uh, so we were treated to twins with Danny DeVito, Mike. That was a quality film. Yeah, as well. <laughs> that was a good film. Oh, it was. Uh, Ma- they, them two. I think. I think it, it the chemistry. Well. Did you like the chemistry? I love it? the chemistry. Ah, <laughs> oh, twins. Um, a couple of years later, they remade the formula again with Kindergarten Cop, which I think is on all of our timeless classic, our best lists. Um, well, obviously, that was the same year as a uh, quality film that was Total Recall. Again, one of his very finest. Now, uh, Total Recall, despite being as archetypally 80s as you can get, was actually 1990. 
but it doesn't take away from his majesty as one of Arnie's, the finest in Arnie's wide canon of uh, of work. And of course, 1991, uh, the se- one of the few sequels that may have improved the original, um, it was T2. Mike, tell us. Um, was it, it, was it better than Terminator 1? Do you, do you think it was better than the original? That's a pretty tall order. It's pretty, uh, a pretty decent film to... St- to uh, compete with Terminator wasn't it but I actually think like you said it probably was one of the few sequels that you get now well any at any time that actually is better than the original I, I think it might have been marginally better is there any scene that's ever been shot in the history of Hollywood that is cooler than Arnie's Terminator on his hog cocking a shotgun around his wrist <laughs> That is, that's a pretty cool scene I, I'm struggling to think of a better one um, so yeah that takes us up to 91 in Arnie's career uh, we're going to continue this after our first track I should just say that um, clearly as we're discussing the great man the uh, all the tracks today will be dedicated to him I mean there are, there are actually a handful of bands who play Arnold Schwarzenegger themed music um, Austrian Death Machine being one, but we're uh, we're going back to the original source, uh, the original and best, which is Arno Core. Uh, the first track we're going to be playing uh, is the first film we're going to debate briefly, Mike. Uh, Commando. Where, where would you rate it? They love some steam, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some fantastic one-liners. As do most of his films, but yeah, it's got a few gems in there. It included, uh, obviously, the line about... Um, you know when I said I was going to kill you last I lied <laughs> uh, it, it also includes the magnificent uh, scenes uh, where he carries a tree trunk over one of his shoulders and let's not forget the brilliant scene where he's uh, he's struggling to evade gunfire from uh, I don't know a platoon of mercenaries by hiding behind flower pots do you remember that? yeah but we'll talk more about that after the track, I think. For your delectation, this is uh, Arno Cole with Commando. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. So, Commando. What a film. Uh, Commando was, of course, the film where Arnie was... What was it? Oh, yeah. That was where his daughter got kidnapped, wasn't it? Yeah. His daughter got kidnapped by the uh, that dictator geezer. And, uh, obviously, Arnie had to uh, do what he had to do to uh, resolve the situation. What was... The, I can't remember that. Can you remember the dictator's name? Can you remember who he was? What was his the, name? The head the head guy who yeah. organised it all. Oh, top boy, yeah. Uh, no, I only I only remember the uh, the village people want to be who uh, who he fought in the climactic <laughs> scene. <laughs> Let us some steam, Bennett. <laughs> um, yeah, Bennett, what a joker. Bennett, do you know what the guy who played Bennett? I'm pretty sure he played Kano in the Mortal Kombat films as well. He wasn't dressed quite as camp there though, with his string vest and his leather gloves. <laughs> he was a bit camp actually. Now you mention it, yeah, that really. Oh God, he he was without. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was he was extremely homoerotic, which was good for an Arnie film. It's not good to just have raging testosterone. You need to have a balance out a little bit. Oh, I don't know. I like um, raging uh, <laughs> testosterone. Yeah, the the thing the thing I remember about Commander as well is he he his character uh, Matrix or whatever his name was. Yeah, Matrix. He yeah. Um, the funny thing was he it pitched. It pictures him living in one of those what remote island hideaways oh, and nice. chopping yeah, wood and stuff, yeah, picturesque, uh, completely nice. secluded. Yeah, yeah. And but the the notion basically is he keeps trying to retire from the service, and they're always like, you know, you'll never retire, you'll never retire. And Arnie just like gives that stare and goes, basically, you know, I'll retire when I want to retire. And of course, he only gets drawn back into it because he needs to rescue his daughter. But after that, you know you better believe he's going to retire mm, which he did yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> and again the, 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 the other two brilliant things that I remember the, from uh, it as well is uh, his classic line about eating green berets for breakfast 
That was a good line. And uh, the other thing is the shed. Do you remember the shed? This this was part of the scene where he was evading gunfire by ducking behind plants. Uh, and and Arnie uh, basically he takes cover in the shed. It's then surrounded by troops, heavily armed troops, who then open fire and you know rip it to swish cheese. So they kick the door open to check for his corpse. And somehow Arnie's managed to swing onto the ceiling, balance there, and as they open the door, he pitchforks one of them and basically takes them all down. That is a quality scene. Only Arnie could could pull something like that off. Only, only the man himself. Um, <laughs> commando, uh, brilliantly comic, but also ballsy and uh, overflowing with machismo. Typical Arnie classic. But where were we anyway? So after Terminator 2, so no, we take we were up to 1991, and uh, Arnie's very wise career decision to link up with James Cameron again. So 1991, Arnie's stock, it couldn't have got much higher, could it? He was the coolest action hero that ever lived. Lad, true lad. He had true lad. Not only that, us. but he clearly had the brevity about him uh, to do the old comedy film as well that always went down well. Twins, I'm thinking. Clearly displaying a bit of... Uh, and Kindergarten Cop was just, you know... Yeah, a, a bit of business now there displayed, I think. He, he knew what, where to go, who to team up with to exactly. be successful. Not, not only can he appeal to, uh, you know, bull-headed guys who just want to see slaughter and um, just a man being the ultimate man, but, you know, he can be soft and gentle for the ladies... And he can babysit kids as well. <laughs> He's the ultimate man. He always was the ultimate man. Uh, and after T2, uh, The Last Action Hero, which is another favourite, in 93, followed that up with two more classics in 94 with uh, Junior, although that's a bit dubious as a classic. That was where his comic uh, side probably went downhill a little bit. Slightly, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, and uh, True Lies was a little bit more of a return to form. Um couple of years later another couple of classics Eraser and Jingle the Way which I'd say was uh, a far better comic attempt than um, than Junior, Junior really yeah definitely anyway we're uh, we're approaching our second track now uh, which we're going to talk about for a little bit before we uh, we play it the second track I have to admit is it's the it's the film I've seen the most times Predator was if you didn't know about Arnie before Predator, you sure as hell did afterwards. I mean, he he did have some good films before Predator. He was the the ultimate man in Predator, and like you say, he, he was forty years old when when uh, filming Predator. He, he doesn't look, watch Predator and tell me if he looks right on our page. Tell me if he looks forty because he does not look forty in that film. He looked after himself well. And again, Arnie with the stubble the aviators smoking the, a cigar the size of a tree trunk cool as you like cool he, as you like he, he, the, the ultimate ultimate action hero anyway we're going to talk about Predator a little bit more after Arno Kors version the following section has been removed due to copyright infringement sorry about that fight the power and we're back with the uh, the balls to the wall anthem Predator by Arno Kors Again, I must have watched this movie over a hundred times. I know every line. Off by heart. <laughs> Mike. Recite it to us. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. T- uh, well, Get to the chopper. <laughs> Look, let's. Um, where where do you where do you rank Predator first of all on the canon of Arnie films? Because to me, it's it's very near the top. To say it's top five, I think is obvious. It's. it's I think if you're talking about an original concept for the script, I think it's, it's number one. It, I, I can't disagree with that. I can't think of any arguments. Maybe to alongside with that. Terminator, T- Terminator, Terminator and Predator to me. Terminator was a better hey, made uh, film. There you go. What's better, Terminator or Predator? I, again, I, I think concept-wise they're probably about level. But let's face it, James Cameron, Terminator's going to win. But uh, well, I mean. It, the thing was, everybody, the, the haters, right? Arnie haters, they'll say, 
Ooh. Arnie was fantastic as the Terminator because he didn't have to deliver a line. Now in Predator, it, as Dutch, he was he was awesome, and and he had many lines. Let's face it, if yeah. he bleeds, we could kill it. Come on, come on, do it! Come on, kill me! I'm here, kill me! Come on! He did have some good lines in that film. He had some fantastic lines. <laughs> Dylan, you son of a bitch! You set us up. It was bullshit, all of it. Bullshit. Now that is something that is. How many times has Arnie said that particular word in films? He's he's got a few. I think Arnie's Arnie's got his. He has got a selection of catchphrases that he rolls out in a large proportion of his films. I think he's probably he said obviously yeah that that's probably one of them. Uh, he's also managed to crowbar "I'll be back" into most of his films because that was in Commando. It was obviously in the Terminator films. It was in True Lo- uh, not True Lies, Last Action Hero. It was, uh, and I think it was in some other ones. Uh, and the other one, uh, a favourite of his that seems to get rolled out in more than a few of his films is "Fuck you, asshole." True, <laughs> it's, it's a quality line. I mean, it's simple, it's basic. To the point. Any moron can say it, but no one can say it quite like Arnie does. We'll go back to um, trying to sum Arnie's career up, because we got to Eraser and Jingle all the way. Now, again, both complete classics, both made in the same year of 96. Now, is this just me? This is maybe just personal opinion. Uh, My personal opinion is Arnie's career plummeted after these two films because the next year was the beginning of the end for Arnie's stratospheric rise to the top of his genre because he made Batman and Robin that's where our um, our opinions differ go on okay no whereas I understand what you're saying and it does make a lot of sense I just think personally and I know there must be a lot of people out there that think exactly the same. I find it hard to dislike any Arnie film. Now, I'm not saying that you dislike his later films, but to me, if there's a film and Arnie's in it, <laughs> then... It, it always improves a film, clearly. Then then it's brilliant. What I'm trying I, to like, say is, if you I look... Can't, I can't... I'm unable to rationalise... OK, let, let me put it this way. I, I always like to look at things in cycles or I look at cut off points if I was to deduce this let's look at the year that Arnie made Batman and Robin 97 his 50th birthday to me when he turned 50 it started going downhill let me give you some examples since Batman and Robin he made End of Days mm, you know uh, maybe some people would appreciate that was that that one with Gabriel Byrne was it? Yeah, I think it was. In yeah. the days, um, okay, that that was that polarized opinion. I think a lot of people did like that, more probably as many as as hated it. But the sixth day, is there anyone who thought the sixth day was a good idea for a movie, um, or a good idea very badly done? Uh, yeah, did you really think Arnie having a clone of himself was? was I'll, a... I'll be honest. It was mm, perhaps that one. Maybe it wasn't amazing. Collateral damage. Did you ever? Did you ever see Collateral Damage? That was two two thousand and two. Was Collateral yeah, Damage? I think that's a good film. I I think maybe that's that was a sign then that maybe he was coming back to. Yeah. Okay, so that leaves us at the obvious juncture of his uh, his last big movie, really. So just having said that, I know a lot of people that really dislike Collateral Damage. Yeah, including myself again. Well, again, maybe that's just my personal opinion. Of it could be. Do you, I mean, do you think, for instance, he might have taken his eye off the ball? Because this was when he was uh, becoming a governor, a Republican governor. Perhaps yeah, he I'm had... not sure if... Was he governor? Yeah, he was gov- governor of California at the time. 2003, I think it was, that he, was, that he actually sure? became was... governor. I'm sure mm. it was. Might I'm not sure. It was around that time, anyway. So he definitely had his, his eye on politics, didn't he? Yeah, but... Let's face it, his final, well, his swan song, again, I say swan song, at the moment, his swan song, his final big movie, as himself, rather than a voice, was uh, Terminator 3. 
thoughts? I think it's fairly safe to say it's not Terminator or Terminator 2. Again, Do you think I've it was just it... James Cameron not being involved that made it a flop? To or, honest, I, I mean, I for instance, yeah. Ed uh, Furlong not being involved as well, the kid from Terminator 2. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think I can put my finger on it, but it's definitely not as good as the first two. I, I'd know a lot of people, again, that don't like it mm. as a film. I do, but I think that maybe that's just because... No, it's just because I fancy Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's definitely not. You no. know, T1 or T2, is it? The next uh, track we're going to play. Let's have some opening thoughts on the the Running Man. Another one of my personal favourites. What What did you think of the Running Man? I thought it was a good film. Because it was based on a Stephen King story as well, which is always good. Yeah, for you, you always like that. Um, no, no, I think it was a good film. It, it was it was at a time again where you know Arnie was on on top form I think it, it showed again the script was very much really an 80s satire in the style of uh, Robocop really the idea that um, in the future um, parts of America would be so sadistic as to screen a live action television show where convicts are set against uh, these stalker characters with deadly weapons and hunted down uh, for entertainment. It was ahead of its time. And of course, Ben Richards, uh, Arnie's character, was brutal as ever with his lumberjack beard and his bulging biceps. Mike, what do you what did you think of the Running Man? I think uh, I think yeah, no, it was definitely a quality film, wasn't it? Like I say, it was it was made in a time where Arnie was on top form. I mean, I think he just done Predator. All right. And uh, yeah, he was he was flying high, and it, it showed because it was it was a quality film, and uh, yeah, he was really good in it. I thought definitely to uh, to quote Arnie himself, I think it, it definitely hit the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. No, it was um, it it was a fantastic film. I, to be honest, I'm quite surprised there weren't any sequels or or uh, movies kind of kind of ripped off that theme. To be honest, could easily have been. Maybe there are some really cheap movies out there that that tried to, but didn't have the pulling power of, of an Arnie. Let's be fair. Yeah, it's never going to be as good without Arnie. Was it? No, of course not. Um, again, no some film is <laughs> some uh, some brilliant one-liners um, from Arnie in there again. Um, I've seen you before. You're the asshole on TV. <laughs> Hello, cutie pie. One of us is in deep trouble. <laughs> did definitely have a, a number of uh, quality quotes in there. And of Again. course, I mean, the, uh, the the horrible game show host, Killian, um, who says, uh, who loves you and who do you love? That could equally apply to Arnie, really. That's, that's what the movie's about. People tuned in because Arnie was in it. He made the movie. The movie was brilliant, but of course, it would have been nothing. This, of course, was... It, w- was sorry, yeah. Carry on. So, I mean, let's face it, it, Arnie did make the movie. Of course he did. I was just going to say that it's another film where he managed to uh, to wangle uh, I'll Be Back into it. Yeah, he's just, he, he put an I'll Be Back into it. Although Killian did tell him only in a rerun. And then, of course, Killian responded uh, when the tables were turned with a drop dead, to which Arnie replied, I don't do requests. That was good. Good it, reply. It was brilliant. Um, anyway, uh, we. Uh, I think that's enough Running Man. Uh, well, we can never have enough Running Man, but the next film we're going to discuss. Uh, another Mike. What is it? What next film we're going to discuss? Well, <laughs> well, let me tell you, young man. Total Recall was an absolutely brilliant film. It's. It's again up there. You know, we said about Predator perhaps being the best film, or maybe Terminator or T two, but I mean, Total Recall is definitely up there in that category. For me, it's it's one of the the best Arnie films. It's got everything. Loads okay, of loads of quality concept, punch lines. Well. It is a brilliant concept. And loads of action. Loads of brilliant one liners. It's just even it's funny. for an Arnie film as well. There there was some really grisly, some really grisly uh, scenes in it as well. Also, there was a bird with uh, three boobs. So, 
That made it for uh, me. How did I know that? Was <laughs> that really made it for me. Your mind. Um, and and of course, lots of mutants. Um, Obviously, how did I know that's sticking your mind? Let, let, <laughs> let, hang on, you, <laughs> the the girl with the three breasts was a mutant as well. I Mike. concentrated on the breasts, not the fact that she's uh, a mutant. Anyway, um, and I mean, let's not forget. Um, well, if, if I there's a. Uh, there's so many things to remember about Total Recall. I I remember as a kid, I always loved the effects. Well, the the effects when they landed on Mars, before oh, the before they yeah bulging up yeah when there was no atmosphere on Mars. Um, <laughs> was that, that was absolutely mad. They look like one of those things. What those little heads that you squeeze and like their <laughs> eyes pop out, little gungy things. That it was funny. What like I don't know, uh, kind of like stress ball things. Yeah, that, ty- that type of thing. Yeah, the, the, uh, there were some real mad effects going on there, but um, and I I just love the fact that the, all the, all the villains, the villains kind of did the rounds in the eighties movies, didn't they? Because the villain in <laughs> Total Recall was the same villain from RoboCop, and I'm pretty sure he only ever played villains, usually in suits. Yeah, he he was a suited villain. He what was, was very name? much an eighties. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? It's I have no name. idea. I can't remember. We. Maybe we could use the uh, break to track that down. Or what we do is we say, or you, listeners, get on our Facebook page, Late Night Large. Who, who is that? Is he still alive? The yeah. actor the actor who played... Uh, oh, it's bugging me. I can't remember I his can't name. I can't even remember his name. But um, what we know is that he's... Arnie, he wasn't Douglas Quaid. That that was just a... That was an alter ego he made up to infiltrate the... Op- the, uh, the, the underground, the Mars Underground... <laughs> he uh, he was. What was his real name? Hauser was it? Hauser, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Was Hauser Arnie's character? Yeah. Uh, right. Hauser was Arnie's was evil played. evil character. Yeah, but Hauser was the guy that Arnie didn't want to be because, to quote Arnie, "Guys are fucking asshole." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, l- l- enough uh, enough elucidating about Total Recall. Let's uh, l- let's listen to the the track, and then we might discuss it a little bit more. Did you know, Arnie's middle name is Alois. He first picked up a barbell at the age of thirteen and chose bodybuilding as a career at the age of fourteen. He was said to be so dedicated that he would break into his local gym at the weekend when it was closed in order to train more. During a year of national service in the Austrian army, he went AWOL during basic training in order to attend a bodybuilding competition. For that, he spent a week in an army jail. He learned English in London's East End while staying with his coach in Forest Gate. And uh, when he moved to the United States at the age of 21, uh, a firm of immigration lawyers claimed that he may have violated his visa and been an illegal immigrant. Welcome back. It, it, It had everything. Uh, one-liners, comedy, comedy gold in there as well. I think really well. If uh, Arnie's type of comedy is your thing, then uh, you won't find many better films than Total Recall for for some of the uh, comedy value. Well, Total Recall, Total Brilliance. To be honest, the best thing I think the greatest thing about Total Recall was it was also such a a monumental concept. The idea that you know, aliens had had built this magnificent machine to melt the ice that was under the surface of Mars, which would enable it to have an atmosphere um, and thus make it available to colonise and, and actually live on Mars. You know, which is you know that's dealing with a, a pretty big concept. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if if that had actually happened or it happens well for it, us. C- it could happen because you know it, they, yeah. they still they're looking for signs of ice yeah it, Mars, it could so. happen and if it did I'd, I'd have to say I'd be tempted as <laughs> as well as most of you probably to uh, get your ass to Mars 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 you were just waiting for the chance to pull that out um, but again it's another great satire as well because get your ass to Mars shut up now Mike <laughs> we are fa- it's, it's Ronnie Cox apparently that, that's the that's the actor's name who plays uh, Cohagen the evil guy and yeah like I say he, he always played uh, an evil guy in a suit 
like in Robocop, you know, he was uh, he was second in line to the board. And in here, uh, Vilas Kohagen, he uh, he basically he's uh, colonized Mars, but he's profiteering from it. In fact, much much like our planet, to be honest, he's a very rich man who's uh, excluding the majority of people from living a peaceful life on Mars by uh, trying to keep all the mineral ores to himself and thus profiteer, but at the same time, you know, sadistically denying uh, the other people living on Mars the air to breathe, hence why they're all mutants, because they're deprived of oxygen. So it's a good satire at the same time. Another decent twist I like as well as a, a character was uh, obviously the, the cab driver uh, Benny screw you Benny <laughs> I've got five kids to feed <laughs> that was it. it's full of twists though isn't it because not only is Benny well it's full of turncoats to be honest because Benny he's a mutant and yet he's turned against his fellow mutants for money and then you also have Quaid who is not a mutant, but apparently being on the side of mutants, turns out that he's actually a, a spy who's had his memory erased and he's actually infiltrated them in order to feed back recon to uh, to Cohagen. Um, but yeah, in true Arnie style, he uh, he describes his former self as a, a fucking asshole and uh, decides that he actually much prefers Douglas Quaid. Um, and you know after some extreme violence he saves the day gets the girl and most impressively creates an atmosphere on Mars yeah that's pretty impressive feat to be honest but, uh, tell you what that's even for Arnie that's that's impressive yeah I, obviously he got, got the girl got rid of the last one didn't he consider that a divorce <laughs> I had to throw it in I there. was waiting for that. You know what? I was waiting for the minute to deliver it, but you're clearly a more natural Arnie than me because you, you, uh, you find the window of opportunity. Um, but, of course, it, a number of magnificent one-liners as well, including, See you at the party, Richter! That that was, that was a good one-liner. There's so many. Anyway, I mean. we could again, we could talk about it all night, and we probably will after this show's over, but let's go on to the subject of our next track. Mike, do you know what the next track is? What is the next track? It's the right? track that launched a thousand action movies, The Terminator. Uh, Anything to say about it before we uh, go into the track? Is it again? Arnie's, is it Arnie's finest hour? Uh, I mean, not, not not maybe not finest film. Again, again, is it his finest turn? I'd say so. But I mean, we we could talk about Terminator for ages, and um, you know, we'll we'll go on to talk about it more after the track. But I mean. What do you really need to say about Terminator? Iconic is probably... It is an oft-used phrase. This is possibly the, mu the the movie where the word iconic was actually invented. I think so. It could well have been. Anyway, let's uh, let's play on the track and we'll... Uh, this is my personal favourite Arno Core track, by the way. Uh, so enjoy this. I am the Terminator! Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. My personal favourite Arno Core track, the Terminator. <laughs> Mike, let's let's talk about just both the Terminator films because they're almost equally as brilliant. You say both, you mean T1 and T2? T1 and T2, sorry. I, I do completely leave out Terminator 3, any following Terminators and the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Okay. So. Only the ones featuring Arnie, obviously. Okay, so let's talk about T1 and T2. Right, we've already, I mean, have we already come to the conclusion that, uh, what, which one did you think was better? I think, what did I say? I think I, I think I was swaying towards T2, but to be honest, it's really difficult. But I think just because there's so many more cool scenes and two awesome characters as opposed to one, maybe T2 does win. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I I agree with you. Yeah. Although but it's close call. Cool. It's close one. Arnie thing. Arnie is definitely more fearsome in the first one. That is true. Very just relentless killing machine. Absolutely perfect match, really. Um Yeah, T one and T two. I love the concepts, the script, obviously James Cameron, the 
direction, production, everything was brilliant. Do you fancy James Cameron? <laughs> Because you I have mentioned him a, hard on a million times. You've Could got one nut. No, you can't see, but I can. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's misses as well, isn't it? In um, T1 and T2. James what, Cameron's misses. Oh, well, she's in them. Yeah, Linda Cameron. You know, um, who plays Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so anyway... Yeah, the the funny thing I found about both both films is uh, they they in each film there's a, a glaring uh, time travel paradox that appears in both of them. Um, I was just trying to explain to Mike the uh, the the first one, uh, which actually appears in in Terminator Two, uh, or is is referenced in Terminator Two, which is uh, the something referred to as the bootstrap paradox. Basically, if you remember in Terminator Two. The, it's it's basically explained to us that Skynet is uh, the robots, the killer robots from Skynet, end up being developed because the original Terminator from uh, uh, from the first Terminator, sorry, Arnie's Terminator, was uh, was not actually completely destroyed. Obviously, he was uh, he was crushed, wasn't he, in that metal compress? Um, they recovered uh, the hand and the microchip circuit from his from his brain, and um, from using those you know newly discovered technologies they then made a, a leap forward in their own uh, investigations and research thus created the so, new technology so basically it suggests that they would never have been created had they not have gone back in time already exactly so technically the killer robots had no origin hence the paradox Yes, and there's another f- amusing paradox, which is actually in the first Terminator, which I'm sure you'll all remember. Kyle Reese, who's sent back in time to protect John Connor's mother, Sarah Connor, to protect her until she has a chance to conceive and give birth to John Connor, who becomes the leader of the Resistance. Now, anyone who remembers Terminators at any degree knows that Kyle Reese actually ends up conceiving John Connor. So, in a bafflingly complex paradox, Kyle Reese travels back in time to protect the mother of the unborn unborn. lieutenant in the Resistance, Lieutenant General, whatever, in the Resistance. So he actually fathers the man who is the same age as him uh, and leads him in the Resistance in the future. Again, no origin. How could he have been born if he was fathered by someone who was the same age as him? Yeah. Oh, no, but no. Maybe if... Uh, maybe I'm getting confused. Yeah, it you, is a paradox. You, you, de- you definitely are no, getting no, confused. No, 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 no. So he was born, right, say, about the time that he goes I'm back to... I'm going to love to hear this. He, he, was, he was born, right? About the, t- the old boy who gets sent back to protect Sarah Connor. Yes. Right. He was born at about the time. Yeah, that he time, gets yeah. that he gets that he arrives th- back in th- the past. That he arrives back in the past. Right. So while he's back in the past, he's born for real, like for the originally yes. born, and he's growing up, and then conceives John. No, wait. My Wait, no, no, it makes sense. It, no, and can I just... It hey, does make sense. Anyway. It makes sense. Any classic lines you want to recite from the, the Terminator films? No, because that, that <laughs> paradox, it then, makes sense. Other than the paradoxes, paradox. there's also another glaring uh, mistake from the Terminator films, and that is that uh, they're constantly referred to as cyborgs, where technically they are actually androids. Cyborgs are actually... Uh, humans with machinery uh, and robot parts added, whereas androids are machinery with human parts added. So they're actually androids because technically, you know, at heart they're robots. Their human nature, the cybernetic part, that that's that's not who they are. They're they're machinery with human added to, not human with machinery added to. So they are androids, not cyborgs. Oh. Didn't notice that. Didn't know that. <laughs> anyway. Cheers. We're going to lead you into the next track. 
again this this made our top list uh, the, these tracks by the way these uh, we decided these tracks based on our favourite Arnie movies the final track the final track for tonight's special Arnie edition of Late Night Large is apt it's the last action hero get your ass to Mars 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 get your ass to Mars